as a kid, I was always told Americans didn't like football. So once I found the MLS, it fascinated me and Landon Donovan was like a unicorn to me. So eventually, as I grew up and learned more about him, I became more and more curious. After all, so much went on with him. At 19 years of age, he got into a collision on the pitch and the other player ended up passing away. He also struggled with depression at several stints in Europe, even playing at Bayern and becoming a cult hero at Everton. He was highly temperamental, getting into disputes with everyone from Beckham to Klinsmann and even pissing off the entire country of Mexico, making newspaper covers for peeing on their pitch. And in the end, he also retired like four different times. But what matters the most is that among all of this, he became the best and the most memorable player to ever come out of the United States. I guess this is a weird video, so enjoy the ride and let's go. Landon was stereotypically American. Born in the suburbs in California, he had a twin sister, his mom was a teacher, his dad was a semi-pro hockey player, and when he was two years old, they divorced. His older brother Josh, against all odds, had fallen in love with <sighs> soccer. I'm not saying that ever again, okay? Regardless, since only the Mexican kids in town seemed to give a damn about it, he began teaching Landon so he could train at home and he was immediately blown away by his talent. By the age of five, they signed him up for a tournament and in his first match he scored seven goals, even though the kids were two years older than him. Then, in the blink of an eye, he had already joined his first youth club and from there on out, it was like he was speed running the Wonder Kid pipeline. At one point, he even surprised his parents by showing them he could speak Spanish without anyone teaching him. When they asked how he learned it, he said he did it so he could play with the Mexican kids who lived nearby as supposedly they would only pass him the ball if he asked for it in their own language. Regardless, at 15 years of age, he was called up for the US Football Olympic Development Program, which is like a nationwide scouting agency, so the kids won't go through their teenage years playing against random kids at their local high school. And after moving by himself to the other side of the country to join their academy in Florida, Landon debuted for the under-17 national team and from the get-go he was pulling historic numbers, totaling 35 goals in 41 matches, while going on a fantastic World Cup run, scoring three goals as though they would only secure a fourth place finish, Donovan would still outshine even the likes of Adriano to secure the player of the tournament award. It was the first time an American had been awarded anything like that by FIFA and so he became a worldwide sensation. And just like any other wonder kid, the European clubs began making their rounds completing his first transfer at only 16 to Bayer Leverkusen. It was also around this time that he got his debut for the US national team putting on a show with a goal and assist against Mexico, who historically had dominated the USA with 27 wins versus only 5. It was a match that not only prefaced the shift in power but also set the stage for one of the funniest ongoing back and forths in football as Donovan just seemed unable to stop pissing off the entire country of Mexico. Regardless, as I once read in an American article, he was supposed to be the one, our beacon of hope, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed Donovan was king. However, quickly everyone became much less hopeful. Donovan struggled to adapt to life in Europe, even admitting that he had been dealing with depression. After all, being so young, living all the way across the world, not understanding a word of what anyone says, can't be easy. Leverkusen tried their best, putting him on the reserve squad in order to ease the pressure and allowing him extended vacations as a cure for his own sickness. But despite all of this, Donovan let his ego get to him and after demanding game time in a stacked Leverkusen squad that nearly won the Bundesliga, he began colliding with the board and was sent on loan back to the USA where he would play for the San Jose Earthquakes, who despite at one point even employing the likes of George Best were not by any means a successful team team and just the previous year had been quite literally the worst team in the country, meaning he was pretty much their only hope, but before that, Donovan would live through one of the most tragic on the pitch moments I've ever heard about. It was an under-20 match against Trinidad and Tobago, away at their homeland, and their captain was a promising kid named Marvin Lee. Trinidad was ranked 25th in the world, the highest they had ever been, and that generation of kids would go on to lead them to their first World Cup. However, that day Marvin and Donovan saw the ball bouncing in the middle of the pitch, and both ran full force into it, colliding head 
to ribcage. Donovan got up and tried to get the ball back but Marvin stayed on the ground yelling in pain. Everyone stopped to help him but he seemed paralyzed as the ambulance took him away. Donovan would eventually be diagnosed with a broken rib but Marvin had it much much worse. From neck damage to spine damage, he was pretty much paralyzed from the neck down. He would never walk again and could barely even move his hands. The Trinidad Federation covered all the costs of his treatment but unfortunately just two years later a simple cold proved fatal. Marvin had died at the age of 21. The stadium in which it all happened was renamed after him, but what does it all mean if he never got to watch Trinidad play at the World Cup? When questioned on it, Donovan would only say, I try not to think about it. Still, among all of that, he came back to the MLS, getting to work even as the season was suspended following 9-11, scoring five goals in the three playoff matches to bring the first ever MLS championship title to San Jose, who had so far only reached the playoffs once in their entire history. In a matter of months, Donovan had elevated himself to the status of MLS star boy and the hype was once again in full flow, especially as he started the all-star match with a hat-trick in the opening 19 minutes, even grabbing a fourth in extra time to tie the match at an absurd 6-6. Winning the award for MLS All-Star MVP by a landslide at the age of only 19. And then, going stronger than ever, starting the season with his first ever Gold Cup, which is pretty much like the North American Euros, being named in the team of the tournament as the US won the second trophy in their history, coming back from a disappointing season with the earthquakes completely jumpstart his legacy at the 2002 World Cup with their best run in 72 years. Being easily the star of the squad, scoring against Poland, starring in their shocking win over Portugal and putting on a man of the match performance against Germany, taking home the award for young player of the tournament following the footsteps of the likes of Pelé, Beckenbauer and Michael Owen. But what was forever remembered was his match against Mexico where he started things off by well, calling them jerks and saying they played dirty which they retributed by going on a massacre with a streak of 6 yellows and a red in the 20 minutes right after Donovan had scored the winning goal with a player even telling him he would find his mom and kill her. Maybe a bit too harsh. Still, in 2003 he brought the US national title back to San Jose, getting 16 goals and 6 assists in 22 matches, destroying the playoffs with a goal and assist in the quarterfinals, a goal in the semis and a brace in the final. But then, as he was about to be called back to the Bundesliga, he lived a massively disappointing season, not even hitting double digits, missing the playoffs and then struggling massively at Leverkusen, only starting 2 matches in 3 months, even rejecting a possible move to Portsmouth as he succumbed once more to a move back to the MLS for a fee of only 1 million euros, joining LA Galaxy. But upon his comeback, instead of cheers, he returned to whistles and angry fans criticizing him for conforming to the safe haven that was the MLS. And that same year, the USA were defeated 4-0 by Mexico, with Donovan running his mouth once again and being further publicly humiliated by the Mexican reporters who caught a picture of him peeing in the grass of their training grounds after being locked out of the locker room. Which was especially ironic, considering he had accused the Mexican players of spitting on him and grabbing him where they were not supposed to. Still, he started his time at Galaxy with a bang, 16 goals and 10 assists, getting 4 goals in the playoffs as they went on to win the whole thing for only the second time in their history. Then joining the USA for another Gold Cup, winning it once again and being named as one of the best midfielders and the top scorer. Despite this incredible start, things really quickly took a turn. On his second season, Galaxy finished only 10th, Donovan was immensely criticized as the US national team crashed out of the World Cup without a single win, which was especially ironic considering he had said he wanted Mexico down on their knees, though he went on to greatly outperform them. Then David Beckham arrived at LA Galaxy and not only did Donovan lose his role as captain which greatly upset him, but Galaxy went down to 11th place. 
the Gold Cup in June would be another odd moment for Donovan, who would score in four consecutive matches up till the final, as the United States won every one of their last three games by a single goal. And still, not only did he get snubbed of the MVP award, but also of a place in the team of the tournament. It was strange, to say the very least. And strange also serves to describe their friendly against Mexico that same year, in which Donovan referred to the US as Mexico's daddy, where goalkeeper Sanchez tried to foul Eddie Johnson while he was celebrating, and both teams refused to shake hands. However, one thing was sure, Donovan had beaten Mexico six times already, more than the US had managed in their entire history. It was the only reason this rivalry had any meaning. Still, in 2008, Beckham and Donovan formed an incredible partnership, which saw him hit 24 goals and 10 assists in just 30 matches, and yet, somehow, Galaxy was down to last place in the league. This led both stars to look for some time away from the club, with Beckham getting a six-month loan away to AC Milan in the off-season, while Donovan negotiated a new contract with the club, demanding the captain armband back and getting a two-month loan at Bayern as well. Regardless, while Beckham shined at AC Milan, Donovan barely played for Bayern, which created even more friction in their relationship and once the club made it to the playoffs without Beckham, a media fight started with Donovan going on record calling him a bad captain, with Beckham then claiming that in 17 years playing in the biggest teams in the world, this had never happened, which some saw as a dig at Donovan, who would bite back pretty much saying that Galaxy had gotten caught up in the Keeping Up with the Beckhams reality show and that Beckham Beckham didn't care for them despite being paid twice more than anyone else. However, once Beckham got back to the USA and talked face to face with him, Donovan calmed down and they even managed to reach the MLS final soon after despite coming out defeated. That year would also be remarkable for yet another squabble with Mexico as their fans were accused of throwing bottles filled with their own urine and vomit as Donovan tried to take a corner kick. The following season he went on loan once again, this time excelling at Everton and becoming sort of a cult hero among the fans, who pretty much convinced him to stay, though Galaxy rejected every attempt at extending his loan and forced him to go back, only for them to lose yet another MLS final, but at least he got to play the World Cup midway through the season, scoring 3 goals in 4 matches that allowed the United States to top their group for the first time since 1930, and Donovan to become the World Cup all-time top scorer from any team in Central and North America. Soon after, he finally resorted to saying some nicer words about Mexico after coming out defeated in the Gold Cup final, claiming he was just hot-headed as a young man and that he actually admired their footballing culture. Regardless, now approaching 30 years of age and having gone 6 years without a title, Donovan had dedicated all his life to becoming the MLS's greatest, but yet his accolades weren't exactly blowing anyone's mind. But that's exactly when everything began falling right into place. Over his final two Two years alongside Beckham, Donovan went on to win consecutive MLS titles, scoring the winning goals in both finals and extending his tally to 5 MLS trophies and 5 MLS Player of the Year awards, while also finally getting back to Everton, further consolidating his status as a cult hero with 7 assists in 8 matches. In 2013, he added to all of this, playing his final Gold Cup, his last chance at the evasive MVP award, and absolutely killing it. Being the top scorer and top assist provider with 12 goal contributions in just 6 matches, only failing to score in the final where he would still lift not only his 4th Gold Cup trophy, but win the MVP award and become the competition's all-time highest goal scorer. All he needed now was one final title without Beckham, just to make a point, but ever since the Gold Cup his relationship with national team coach Jurgen Klinsmann had deteriorated, being put on blast in the media, sending him back to his years of depression in Germany, no longer enjoying any of the time he spent on the pitch. Deciding to go on a 5 month sabbatical extending well into the season, culminating in his decision to quite simply quit football at the end of next year, which in his own words, brought back that feeling of playing like a child, Suddenly, I was free. And against all odds, we witnessed some of his best ever performances, totaling 31 goal contributions at 32 years of age, including 19 assists, the second most ever managed in an MLS season, only below the great Valderrama, as well as scoring a hat-trick in the playoffs and conquering the whole thing for his sixth time, more than anyone in history.
Still, despite all of this, Donovan wasn't allowed a victory lap. Klinsman saw his sabbatical as a sign of weakness and ended up leaving him out from the 2014 World Cup, with Donovan even making a PlayStation commercial in which he seemed to mock the whole thing. But regardless, it was also that year that he said his goodbye to football, being the all-time top scorer for the US national team and the MLS, a huge legacy that even saw the Player of the Year award being renamed to the Landon Donovan Award. But the thing is, he came back like three times, first playing one extra season as LA Galaxy went through an injury crisis in 2016, then retiring and coming back for another at Club Leon in Mexico, and finally one last comeback season to the San Diego Soccers at 38 years of age.